Hey guys, Ivan here. So in this video, we have a couple of very interesting updates and we are starting with this one, the most recent physique update of Michal Krizo. We have a full posing video. You can see Michal's physique right now from all the angles in all the poses. I'm going to show it to you in a second, but as you can see right here, he is standing next to Milos Sarchev. They took a photo in a Dragon's Lair gym. And you guys know that Milos is from Serbia like myself and Michal is actually from Slovakia, which is basically a neighboring country. We do not speak the same language, it has some similarities, but not really. What we do have in common is that we are both Slavic people and that's about it. But the real question and what I'm wondering looking at this photo is, did Mikhail Krizo hire Milos Sharchev to prep him? Is Milos Sharchev Mikhail Krizo's new coach? Of course, Michal already has a coach, but we never saw this guy completely peeled and completely peaked on the stage before. So I think it would be a great idea for Michal to pair with one of the top IBB Pro League coaches. And Milos might be that guy. He works with a lot of high-level IBB Pro coaches. Maybe he doesn't have a Mr. Olympia under his belt yet, but this might be the one. We'll see. As you can see right here when he posted the video, he writes a caption in which he kind of explains why Michal never, never peaked, never brought his absolute best. So he says today at the Dragon Slayer at the Mecca, first pictures and videos do not capture the real look, I promise you that. Mikael looks much more impressive in person. Sheer size and muscle quality can really be appreciated only to a naked eye when you see him in person. Keep in mind that he is traveling, not eating, not taking supplements, yet he looks like this year round. Yes, he is 100% committed to make an impact in our federation and that's why he signed up for. There was no challenge at the elite, so he didn't have to push to the limits. Now he'll have the best of the best on the stage with him and he can't wait to be tested. Watch out. So what Milos says makes a lot of sense. I spoke about this before. He never really had true competition in IBB Elite Pro and he never really pushed his body to the max. Like he won shows four weeks out, you know, in half conditioning. So now it's gonna be a different story when we see him completely dialed in. It's gonna be a dangerous package. And look at him now. He definitely looks like a freak. Like an absolute freak. Now, this guy from the front, he looks really good. And also from the side, he has one of the freakiest muscle bellies ever. I mean, look at the side chest. Look at the chest. Look at the arms and the delts as well. Looks kind of like Kevin Leveroni, but bigger. Honestly, bigger. Yeah. He's taller, so he's actually pretty big. He has a big frame. Here is the biggest weakness. His glutes. His glutes are tiny. The back would definitely be better as well. Look at the delts. Look at those freaking front delts. Looks insane. So this guy is really a freak. I mean, his back would definitely be better and bigger, but it's not horrible. Uh, the only thing that is really bad on him are definitely his glutes. That's something he needs to work on. He probably needs to do a lot more deadlifting, a lot of hip hinge movements. Yeah, those are for the glutes and the hamstrings mainly. And I don't think he does those kind of exercises. But as you can see, the back, it's not so bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I'm saying it's not as good as he looks from the front. Look at this. From the side and from the front, he looks like a, like a Hulk. He looks insane. Look at his side tricep. I'm sure he can't even do a proper side tricep with holding his arms back. Look at the size of his head compared to his arms, compared to his chest. Like, he has some of the craziest proportions in the world right now. I would like to see a little bit smaller waist. Look at the size of the arms compared to the head. Like, it looks sick, it looks weird, it looks just wow. And I'm really curious to see how he looks standing next to the best in the world. As I'm sure all of you watching this video are curious as well. And he fulfilled our wish. He transferred to the MPC, to the IBU Pro League. And if all goes well, and if he really wants to, he can be on the Mr. Olympia stage this year. I'm sure he can. There are shows that are pro qualifiers and in the same weekend there is a pro show so he can do those two. He can turn pro and the next day he can compete as a pro and get his Mr. Olympia qualification. There is still plenty of time until the Mr. Olympia for him to prep properly and also enough shows to, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. So if he really wants to do that, he can do it. Maybe it would be better if he actually tried to pack on 
more tissue especially to his glutes and his back to make some improvements and to you know start working with a coach in the off season so the guy can know his body better and then prep for the next year maybe with Milo Sharchev maybe somebody else imagine if Hani Rambert prepped this guy what would that look like could he win the Mr. Olympia like that I mean look at his most muscular it looks ridiculous and for a tall guy he also looks very good in the crab pose look at this well, that's because he has crazy big arms. You can't do this unless you have really big arms. And here he is at the Bev's powerhouse gym. He is practicing some posing with the head judge in IBB Pro League, Steve Weinberger. And I'm sure that's gonna help a lot. I mean, Steve always gives these guys great advice. And I'm pretty sure knowing him personally wouldn't hurt. You know what I'm saying? So, Michal Krizo is in the US. I don't know if he moved there. Is he gonna be staying there for a long time? I have no idea. But he looks amazing right now. And as you can see, he is meeting with the, with the important people from the IBB Pro League. And I'm sure if he stays in the US and if he works out there and if he does everything from there, it's gonna be a help to his career. But we'll see about that. Whatever you guys think about Michal Krizo right now, tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is the physique update of Dorian Yates. I know a long retired Mr. Olympia, he retired like 25 years ago and as a bodybuilding channel I should just let him go, let him enjoy his life and not talk about him, but how can I not talk about this guy when he looks like this? And also there is a lot of fans of Dorian Yates out there, I am one of those, I still watch his older videos when he was training, you know, Blood and Guts and his interviews, so he's a big inspiration for me, and I'm really excited to see what he looks like right now, and as you can see, he looks actually pretty good. Now Dorian, he's one of those guys who completely reinvented himself. After he retired for some time, he was kind of lost, as he says. He wasn't sure what he should do with his life because the only thing he knew how to do was bodybuilding and now there was no purpose for him to do bodybuilding. So now he has nothing to do with bodybuilding, basically. What he's doing, why he's staying in this kind of shape is because he does yoga, cycling, stuff like that. He enjoys his life, he travels a lot. I think he's eating a plant-based diet, I don't think he's even eating a lot of meat. And if you consider all that, if you consider his lifestyle, which is completely opposite lifestyle of bodybuilding lifestyle, he actually looks really good. And also if you consider his age, Dorian actually turned 60 in April this year. So for a 60 year old, he looks amazing. I mean, look at the abs, you can still see visible abs. I won't even say just visible, he's not just completely shredded, like skinny. He's actually still pretty muscular, right? He still has a lot of mass, he has pretty good chest, pretty good shoulders. He is still holding on to a lot of muscle, to a lot of tissue. And what is holding all this muscle is purely his genetics. And of course him being active, but he's not lifting weights, he's not doing gear, he's not eating a lot of meat, and he looks like this because he has incredible genetics. Now, I stumbled upon a video from 2011. Now, I thought back in 2011, Dorian didn't even lift or anything like that, but actually, he kind of did. Look at him here. So he actually still had a lot of muscle, nothing compared to what he was when he was competing, of course, but compared to a normal guy, to somebody who is not a bodybuilder, he still looked pretty massive, right? Take a look at this. He absolutely dwarfed this guy here. And this guy, I don't think he's that skinny, he's just a normal looking dude. So Dorian Yates was still pretty big in 2011. He was still training, he was still probably on, on some gear, so it took him over 14 years to actually reinvent himself. I find it weird that Dorian would do something like this. He doesn't really strike me as the type to do these kind of shows. Maybe they offered him a lot of money, maybe he was simply bored, whatever it is, he did this disappearance. And as you can see, he still looked pretty jacked in 2011. Fast forward to now, he still looks jacked, especially for a 60 year old who doesn't do anything remotely related to bodybuilding. We also have a physique update of Filian Bonek, another one. He became pretty active on social media lately, and right now he's 260, as you guys know, very, very lean, very shredded, and for somebody of his height, you know, 260 is a lot, especially with this conditioning. 
His arms are looking incredibly big. Whatever he's doing with them, they look incredible. They look massive. They look just as big as his head, basically. And if everything goes well for William, I think he's going to be in the top 5 this year. He's not going to be out of top 5 like last year. Last year he was 6th. This year, whew, even though it's really going to be tough to crack that top 5, I'm pretty sure William Bonek actually has it. He has proven this so many times before. He was top 3, top 2 at the Mr. Olympia even. He won two Arnold Classics. And if you ask me, he won the third one, which he lost to Brandon Curry officially. So I think if everything goes well for him, if he doesn't have any travel issues that he had past couple of years, he's going to do well. He's going to make a comeback, an official comeback. He already kind of made a comeback at the Arnold Classic, but at the Mr. Olympia, that's going to be an official comeback. And I think he actually has a chance of even winning the Mr. Olympia. He has beaten Big Grammy before, but you know, Mr. Olympia winner is usually, you know, a big guy. So they probably wouldn't give it to him, even if he came sharper and just better than Brandon. Pretty much the same thing happened at the Arnold Classic, so, you know, it's gonna be really tough for William to win that Mr. Olympia, actually, but in my opinion, he can be the best-looking bodybuilder on that stage. I can see that happening. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.